Howdy, everyone. What's up, guys? What's going on, everyone? To a surprise show. We weren't going to do it, but hey, what the heck? It's too cold to do anything else. Obviously, you're like me, Mitch. It's just too cold and you're way too bored. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is a big part of this. I've definitely gone through all of my new videos that I thought would be stacked up that I could watch for like at least a day on YouTube. I was like, I'll be able to watch a bunch of stuff. No, I'm out of that already. Yeah. There's a lot of couch surfing this weekend, I think. Yeah, it's relaxing it time. Pretty chilly. Like, any of you guys fish this weekend? Channels. No. I think uh, Monday was minus 47 here. Jeez. So we didn't even go into work. Yeah. I don't even think I opened a curtain. <laughs> yeah, I camped Friday, Saturday on the ice. It was brutal. And there was like half an inch of ice on the tent. It was horrible. Probably never do that again. I'm getting too old to do that. In those temperatures, for sure. Oh, it's ridiculous. You're Did you get a lot like, of... Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not getting too old to camp on the ice just when it's that cold. Yeah. I don't want to be holding that heater up to each hub, trying to melt each hub because it's got just covered in ice. Well, yeah, was I, I'm wondering, Adam, now I know you fish a 6 by 12 Is there any interest for you in going smaller on cold days? Would that help? Or are you just set up where you can't go smaller? Well, I could go smaller, but if I'm going to go smaller, I'm just going to get a flip over one man because it'll just be for run and gun. Because otherwise, like, I run and gun outside, like, I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It's just at some point it gets too cold for the fish. It's too cold for the hole. It's constantly freezing up. Like, I don't want to be trying to, like, jig and everything's just everything's just going to crap. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, probably, I probably will never go smaller than, than what I have. I Actually, I fish, we fished with Sebastian there the other day, and he had the Monster Lodge. Yeah. And if you notice, that, that footprint was – it's the same size shack, but the footprint kicks out at the bottom, so it gives them an extra two feet of space. I need something like that for sure. Yeah, it's something that Otter actually has a lot better option space-wise. Even uh, <clears throat> my buddy Alex there, he's got the new Otter compared to my Eskimo Outbreak. Uh, he's got a lot more arm room with that hub than, than the Eskimo even has. So. Hmm. Yeah. What's up to Scott and, and everyone saying hi? Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, guys, appreciate sure. it. Random show, people. and we got we got people watching still. That's pretty sick. Yeah, I think there was nothing else to do. You can't go well, outside. I mean, it's You're Tuesday and it's, TV. it's freezing. <laughs> Just freezing. No one wants to watch Christmas movies anymore. Christmas is over. There's no there's no such thing as New Year's movies. Oh, there probably is some hallmarks for you. We're bored. Well, I don't know of them then. I was sheltered maybe from the New Year's movies. The only <laughs> Christmas movie I watched was Bad Santa. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going on one of those Christmas A Christmas movies. Story is a classic, bro. A Christmas Story is a classic. Yeah, Rudolph. I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a super big Christmas guy, but that movie's awesome. You'll shoot your eye out. You say so. <laughs> it is, man. <laughs> well, we got a few people to bring on the show tonight to talk about different stuff, things they've been doing, just catch up with some people over to finish off the year pretty much. Like, everyone had a pretty good year, I think. As much as we could, it was a crazy year. I think everyone was pretty busy most this year. Seemed like uh, everything kind of... The economy just kind of switched through this year and it was just wound out. So most yep. people are busy and tried to get fishing in when they could, but unfortunately I wasn't able to travel very much, which which wasn't the greatest for the fishing, but I mean uh yeah, yeah. I was definitely looking forward to next year. I mean, as we come into the new one, it's looking things are looking a little brighter, I think. I don't know, from day to day. Things are looking brighter. I think I'm Next year, I'm pretty optimistic about it's going to be awesome. We need a redemption trip for the Connollys to go out and give them a hard time for sure next year. So, absolutely, and I'd like to get back to the ocean, like all kinds of stuff. Yep. 
Yeah, there was a lot of missed opportunities this year, but what can you do? You got any trips planned coming up, Mitch? I know. I I think I saw you comment about going to BC in the new year there, and hopefully trying for some some bass and yeah. some sunfish or something. We'll do some largemouth. Um, That'd be sick. We got Cold Lake, uh, possibly some Saskatchewan, and maybe sneak out to Manitoba for a little. No, oh, that sounds pretty wicked. We'll see. It's it's making it happen. It, you have an idea, but making everything go through. Yeah, <laughs> it's wishful thinking more than anything right now. And it, by the sounds of it, you, me and your line of work is about to pick up uh, an awful lot. So whether we're, we're going to have the time to do things like this is is a little on the fence, I think. Yeah, no. Like we could have 120 mods Friday for, and then we're good for two years. Like, and we'll be yeah. wound up with the night shift. So, yeah, exactly. Running 12 yeah, again. Yeah. Makes fishing hard when you're just working nonstop like that, but we'll get her in. Oh, yeah. There's always the impulse trip. Someone's like, hey, come up here. It's like, okay, I'm leaving now. I need I a think, break. I think those are some of my favorite. Oh, so yeah. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. That's yeah. why Mitch is going to go fishing with me tomorrow. Bring over to <laughs> <laughs> you going to go knock on his door at 6.30? No, he'll knock on my door. He's got to drive right past my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty much. That works, I guess. We just sneak down. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, we'll see. You guys got anything planned? Uh, trying to sneak into Manitoba? No, I mean, I've got the unfortunate trip to Cold Lake in February. Um, oh, yeah. How about you, Adam? But I know you're not going to Cold Lake in February. Well, I, no, I I'm not going to Cold Lake. Open. I'm not going to Cold Lake in February because I thought we discussed this and then you just turn your back on me. Like, it is what it is. But, uh, <laughs> no, I think we're going to go to Manitoba. I'm kind of fly by the seat of, fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. So, I mean, I'm going to be chasing walleye this weekend. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go out tomorrow, I think, for a few hours. Craig, but... you haven't ice fished. Don't worry. I've ice fished enough for the both of us. I've camped on the ice now 12 nights, and I have one fish that I'm willing to show a picture of. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't worry about it, bro. I'm doing it all for us, and I'm getting skunked hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, Craig, we'll meet up when we head down. Maybe you guys yeah. should think about coming too. It's not that far. That's nope. definitely one of the places that uh, me and me and Tasha have talked about going um, this winter. Now that things are opened up, we weren't allowed, we weren't able to go last winter. Um, but I'm really excited to uh, hopefully hit a few lakes down there, Wassa, Baines, that kind of thing. So see what happens. Never been yet. No, it's a good time, especially in the summer. Oh, in the summer. Little, me and Craig slower. have had. Me, Craig, and Sasha, his daughter. I mean, his daughter outfishes me almost every time, and she teaches me how to do things. But uh, me, Craig, and Sasha have had some great days on the boat out there. It's it's a wicked oh. place to fish. It's amazing. It's warm, good fishing. No way, Scott. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah. They just don't want. They don't want this. This or wait. Wait, I don't know how to do it because the camera screws me up. But they yeah, don't want me and Todd it. fishing with Scott because they know it's a deadly combination. A three deadly combination of anglers. And every time we try to get together, for some reason, it doesn't work out since the first time. But I really miss you, buddy, and I hope we get to fish soon. I actually forgot about Scott coming out here because I just assumed he was trying to meet up with you to fish, not me. So It's all good. You're kind of like a... It's kind of like expected of you to not remember things about yeah. friendship. I only live 10 minutes from Calgary. <laughs> You'll fish with Adam. I'm just bugging you. <laughs> Who do we got? Who do we got to bring on tonight, Mitch? We got Cal. I've fished with yeah. Cal, Cal a few times across Canada with Jim okay. on the Dime Store. He's been part of the Dime Store show for a long time, many years. Oh, okay. That's a great cool. guy. I, I, I don't know Cal, so that's that's cool to know. Yeah, I know he's been around for a while. Lots of yeah, we've had some awesome trips, lots of fun. 
some right crazy on. snowman climbing in uh, Gimli, Manitoba one night, walking oh, back yeah. to the hotel, but uh, maybe a polar bear, I can't remember, but I think there was some <laughs> pictures, but who knows where they are now. <laughs> Hopefully they're gone. <laughs> I, I think they're all deleted. Uh, <laughs> I'll figure this out and bring a bit. Oh, man. Steve, I see Steve commented there. Steve's got... Uh, a heck of an ice machine he posted there the other day. I think that's it in his profile picture. I got to get me one of those. Instead of getting me a flip over shack, I need to get me one of those UTV on tracks with with all the boxes. That looks sick. Hey, Cal. Hey, how's it going, boys? How's hey, it going, Cal. man? We're doing good. Good. How, how's your season been this year, Cal? Slow. Slow. Yeah. I haven't got out yet. It's been one of them years. Think. Every time I try and get out, it, then it turned cold on me, and we'll get out soon. Though this weekend, things are turning around. Got some time. Yeah, well, it's, it's because you're you're always in your hot tub or traveling around nice. with the rodeos. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a crazy year this year with rodeo. All of a sudden, they opened everything up here in Alberta. In two months, they tried to fit every rodeo that we normally have in six months in. So between the rodeo and the chucks, I've been gone and. Uh, Still managed. I just drugged the boat along with me behind the truck camper, and away we went. I'd go rodeo and at in and that, go fishing when I could. Yeah, everyone liked well, it because you could zip out to the lake, especially when we're in. Yeah, there you go. That's nice. Yeah. What was your favorite trip this year? You'd think. Huh. My favorite trip this year. We last March we camped out on the ice for a week at Lac La Biche. And uh, I guess it was it was fun, but it, it was my first ice camping trip, so a lot of lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> that was it was kind of weird. It, we went from minus twenty eight one day, and it was plus three the next, and we had it was raining and snowing, and and uh, those ice shacks they're night or the tents they're nice, but they're they're not all that waterproof when yeah. it's raining on them. Yeah, I've never been caught in rain in my shack, and it's like one yeah. thing that I definitely know I don't want to happen because I feel like it's not going to help at all. Well, and of course it was three o'clock in the morning, and so the bed, the bed, and everything's cots all move into the center Starts of the tent. Drip it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I wonder, I wonder if you did that spray like on tents and stuff. If you sprayed it in the summer, pop I it see. up, spray it like, down with that UV rainproof stuff if that yeah. would help i think it would help but i think the big thing too is keep the snow off the top of the tent yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. it kind of snowed and then it kind of got warm and then that rain and then it just run right in kind of some of the seams it's, well i know I, even when it's when it snows for me i have to clear it off otherwise like if i'm using my tank top heater instead of the buddy yeah. heater even probably the buddy heater it just starts raining because it's it's melting it sitting on top so yeah, yeah. get it too hot in there yeah, I like to have it toasty, man. I want to fish in my sweatpants <laughs> if I'm in the shack. <laughs> I can't even fish with you in your tent. You like it so toasty. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. T-shirt weather is where it's at. T-shirt and shorts. Yeah, that's always the best when you can kind of just chill out. and that's. I think that's the nice thing about ice camp, and you can kind of just, in the middle of the night, just decide, hey, I'm not tired. I'm going to fish. Yeah. Hang yeah. Out. I caught some of the biggest fish on the lake at, at 11, 12 at night and caught a few at a, two in the morning. And yeah, it was good. It was a pretty good trip. Yeah. that That's a point that I've always made, like made about, cause I ice camp a lot is a lot of my biggest fish come at times that I wouldn't be there if I wasn't camping. That's for sure. Yeah. Like either it's so early or right in the middle of the night. But a lot of times it's like right early in the morning is when I've caught a lot of my biggest bike and biggest walleye. And uh, I wouldn't be there because I'd still be driving to the lake. So camping is there. Large walleye last year, Adam, were all middle of the night, right? Like two or three in the morning. Well, yeah. Like there'd be like obviously there's bite windows before that, but I would definitely get on some big fish. Like I'd wake up because I, uh, so I recently just invested in a buddy heater, so I trust it to leave it on to sleep now. But before that, I didn't sleep with a heater on, so I'd wake up and it'd be freezing cold in my shack. So I'd turn on my heater and warm up, and I'd fish constantly and almost all the time, like 
just hammer monsters is sick. Mm -hmm. My insulated isn't as water resistant as my Mm non-insulated. Probably just sucks it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, probably. Yeah, like, because it's like a a cloth. I think one of the problems, I know, I got a a Cabela's tent and they stitch their name into it all through it. Oh yeah. I think it leaks through where they stitch it. It's good. It's yeah. Oh, really? It, it kind of holds the two pieces uh, together, like the, the the different layers together. But the problem is yeah. it doesn't make it very watertight where they put those stitches, right? Huh. Yeah, I think you got to maybe do the spray in the summer and let it bake. Then yeah. it'd be, be good. Yeah, I, mean, I wish it was uh, – I wish you would have mentioned that when it was still nice out because I, that's a really <laughs> good idea, and I wish I would have tried that. <laughs> Because even if you got like a canvas or something, it'll soak in. Even yeah, the canvas work. Kind of work. lay over. Yeah, sounds, sounds like, like a seal problem to me. Sounds hey. like. <laughs> Just go sleep in a hotel, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> how I roll, man. It's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's how me and Aaron roll too. If Aaron's with me, I actually, <laughs> I'm actually a big fan of Todd sleeping in a hotel whenever he comes and fishes with me for a couple of days because he always brings me a big thing of coffee in the morning, and that's pretty clutch. <laughs> and it's probably a lot happier. What's the oh, point in sleeping on a cot that's five and a half feet long, and then I'm bend over at the knees just to be able to pass out? <laughs> Well, if you weren't seven feet tall, it'd be okay. I'm like, I'm like half the human being he is, really. Just like, you could literally cut him in half and it's probably me. Half the human being, but twice the man, let's be honest here. Okay. We might be brothers, we might be brothers here, but I'll still take you. <laughs> Brotherly love. You got any big trips planned this year, Cal? Um, I think we're gonna do a bunch. Probably do a lot more ice ice camping. And I think yeah. I may head up to Lactobish this weekend. We'll see how it turns out, and mm-hmm. and uh, may go up to definitely gonna go into Saskatchewan and Manitoba most likely. Um, here hopefully coming up soon, and uh, yeah, BC for sure. Um, if Mitch takes me out, and uh, we got a few good little lakes down there for some perch and some bass and. Yeah. There's a few other ones I want to try. Get the skidoo out and kind of go portable and and uh, get into where we can get chase some trout and yeah, I think yeah that especially that trip to Lactobish last year. After that, it kind of sold me on ice camping. It was about day three when it was raining on me and I was just about heading home. And then uh, I decided, I, well, I'll just I ended up moving the whole setup. And that's as you guys know, that's not the easiest thing to do in the world. It's not a quick project, but uh, no. re- I reset up, and that night um, I was kind of I caught a couple, couple little guys and a few good pike. But uh, it was about eleven o'clock. I cur- crawled into bed, and I wasn't tired. Just kind of turned all the lights off. I even had I don't know what I was thinking. I turned the fish finder off, saving battery, and uh, just put <laughs> jig and minnow down in both holes and had the bells on. And every now. I just hear this little ding, ding, like every 10 seconds that I'm kind of going, okay, well, I maybe should get up. And uh, I picked up one of them Garmin Panoptics, and it's it's otherly, otherworldly when it yeah. comes to <laughs> like And uh, as soon as it fired up, all I seen was huge walleye, one on each hook, sitting there. And uh, I ended up landing a... And then all of a sudden, this little guy came in, and I caught about a 16-inch walleye, which was <laughs> nice to see in there because it's showing that they got the different year classes, right? But then uh, yeah, absolutely. So I said, okay. And then the, the two big guys kind of messed off, and so I just put it back down, and I left the fish finder on this time, and and it wasn't five minutes later, one of them big boys came in, and first fish was a 28, and the second one was a 29, so within about 15 minutes of each other. So, That's yeah, great. no, it was good. It's yeah, there's some good. Good. It's always, always nice easy. when you run into two fish like that. <laughs> well, yeah, it was like within 15 minutes, and of course, all the cameras were off and everything now because everything we'd shut down for the day, and it was like, oh well, <laughs> try and get a good picture of them, and away we go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Those, it's awesome when the wolf packs come in. 
Well, yeah, it was just like banging games. Wow. Yeah. Catching them in your... And I find that's the thing with walleye is like when you get that one big one, if some, if you got someone around fishing with you, they better be actively fishing because there's more coming too. Yeah, for sure. Probably around three Those of them. big year class fish hang out together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's, it's amazing how they'll come in and just... Yeah, they'll be moving from hole to hole and we can... That's where that panoptics is so nice. You can kind of see everything they're doing. You can see which way direction they're going. You can kind of, you can see how big they are with those grid lines. You can kind of, you know, if you're looking at this little, little 12 inch, or if you're looking at like a 36 inch pike coming in and 40 inch yeah, pike. Hey. And your, your eyes get big and you just try not to do anything and lose them. Yeah. I seen one of the <laughs> on that panoptics and it was, I seen that it was about a 12 inch pike. Everything's down. I had one rod, just a jig and minnow on one. I seen all of a sudden this streak come across the screen, stop at the bait, didn't hit it, didn't even touch it, didn't move it, nothing. Turned around, back the other way, and off the screen. And it, wow. he was maybe on the screen for half a second. It was just like, really? Yeah. It was like all I seen was a blur. It's a crazy. Well, that's house. crazy. I've never, I've never seen anything like that. And with that new technology, you're never going to see that, right? You'd never even know that fish was there. Do you have the live scope? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, that's it's a that big investment. Is pretty it's pretty crazy. Every penny. Yeah, no, I'm slowly getting <laughs> to that situation secretly. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know if you know, but posting it on Facebook isn't that secret. Yeah. Well, I was asking for advice. <laughs> <laughs> and a Garmin rep with a demo model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. But I have a guy that will come help demo anyways. Yeah. <laughs> that's the pro staff. But he said it's pretty hard to get one that's been uh, lent out a few times. So usually this goes to the the vendors or the guy that's demoing them so well it's pretty yeah, hard to buy one cheap once they go out and someone uses one they yeah. buy it i think it's just and once I, you've seen it once i can't see someone wanting to sell one either like yeah what, what would be the point i mean i've seen they, todd's for the first time the other day and like i mean Todd's kind of a poor example because he's not really good at bringing fish in or catching them. So I got to see the technology working, but uh, not quite fish coming in yet. I'm really excited to see that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a game changer for sure. Yeah, it's I, sick. Well, I think I guess I should – you probably wanted me to give some tips and tricks, I guess. And um, Basically, I fish walleye a lot. That's kind of my main species. I like chasing in the winter. Um, I always, Jig and minnow is by far the best catching. But the key to it is you need to have one rod. I'll usually stick it right down on the bottom, maybe within an inch of the bottom, right down. Um, I've seen a lot of fish, especially with this live scope. You can see them bubbling on the bottom. You can't even tell they're there on normal on normal uh, electronics, but you'll see them there on that phenoptics. The other one is rattle and wrap going on the other one spoon and just vary your, try different things, different rattles, different, different baits have different tones. And especially when the fishing's tough, you just gotta, you gotta be active with one rod or, or you're never gonna, you'll never produce. You can sit there all day with two jig and minnows down and never catch a fish and wonder why. Well, you never get, you never, uh, you got to search them out sometimes and make them want to bite, right? Yeah, running gun sometimes. Yeah, key. absolutely. But sometimes I'll like catch myself. Sometimes I'll catch myself in my shack and I'll have that dead stick down, and then I'll grab like a jig and minnow rod and I'll start jigging minnow next to it. And I'm like, "What are you even doing, man? Like, get a spoon, get a." Jig and wrap, get a rip and wrap out, make some noise, bring them in. And if they want to eat that, they'll eat it. But you don't need to have two yeah. jig and minnows sitting side by side ever. No. It's pretty useless. No. Really. Unless you're in an automatic lake, then it's kind of just easy to go, right? But <laughs> you're yeah. Good, yeah. Well, sometimes you find those spots where you just sit there and it's just everything you put down, they bite. So, More but I think, Absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, and I think one of the things too I've noticed too, with especially since getting this live scope, it's it's you know what? A lot of times you'll see a, a fish will be sitting there looking at it, and he could be sitting there for fifteen minutes. As soon as you twitch that jig and minnow, he hammers it. Yep. So don't be afraid to move that dead stick every now and again. Just you know, it doesn't have to be big. You'd, oh, absolutely. Like, you know, couple inches yeah yeah usually it's when you're getting up to go to go to the can or something outside the tent and you accidentally bump it and all of a sudden you get a fish hit it yeah, <laughs> yeah. or fishing with adam it was all muskrats yeah <laughs> which is pretty cool to see on the panel hey that, i don't yeah. like that thing man <laughs> speaking of which so i'll be right back all right <laughs> Hey, Cal, thanks for coming on. Maybe we'll see you towards the end of the month. Maybe we can yeah. hook you up with Jim and have both of you on. Yeah, I know no, Jim, sounds good. Jim's going to come on later in the month, so we can yeah. figure something out for that and have uh, more conversation. Yeah, definitely. Anytime. And if anyone's out there wants some tics, tips or tricks or any of that stuff and just some information, don't be afraid. I'm on Facebook, Instagram reach out to us at the Dime Store Fisherman. We always respond, so we're out there to help. We just want to have everyone out there enjoying the outdoors and, and having a great day fishing, so. All right, Cal. Thanks for coming. All right, thanks guys. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. 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 Take it easy, Cal. All right. Oh, man, I'm so good at this, but it probably looks funny. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't even looked. I haven't even looked at my computer since it didn't work, and I was like, "Live scope." <laughs> no, <laughs> not the computer. How's it going, Aaron? How's it going, guys? Good. Right on, man. How's your season going, buddy? Oh, I had a pretty good one. This uh, I'm off to a bad start, though, as usual. Usually, that always happens to me. I'm always skunked or not catching them and watching everybody else do it, but. You know, you just got to keep at her and keep going and get those fish on the end of the lines. Yeah. How's it going, Run Greg? and gun. Yeah. So you're with the locators, eh? Yeah, you bet. Uh, tell us a little about that. Uh, it's just basically a bunch of guys, group, uh, family, friends, and associates that kind of get together and just get, get, out, get outdoors, have fun, enjoy what Mother Nature has to offer. And just get out there and have some fun, right? Like, uh, it's as simple as that. We're not out to be rock stars. But we have been, uh, you know, exploring the YouTube aspect of things, the Instagram, the Facebook, and and all that that kind of go with it. And, you know, to be quite honest, it's uh, it's more of a knowledge game these days. And, and you know, me tuning into your guys' show, I'm learning that as well. It, it's just, a, it's a matter of, either teach people something or just get on and get going right like if you're not a rock star and you're not pulling out big cannons every time like mr greg rice you ain't gonna be uh you ain't gonna be doing much right so. <laughs> well, what that's what surprised me like greg get on the ice we missed the big walleye and the big pike pitchers on the ice man that dude slays on the ice and lakers i guess too but Oh yeah, yeah. Greg, Greg's an ice legend, man. Like I love seeing his stuff from up north. Absolutely, a machine. You got any yeah. uh, big trips planned this year? Uh, I like to go up north quite a bit, hit up Cold Lake, and uh, you know, just around that area and st such. A little bit of Saskatchewan as well. They're good lakes to go fish out there, prime for perching and trout and everything else that goes with that. So. Looking forward to it. There's a, there's a nice big ice house with all our names on it. Kind of be nice to get the boys out there, do some overnighters in the trailer, and uh, just kind of looking towards to get, you know, good access and see if we can get those trucks and trailers out on the ice and uh, just get to pounding some holes. Nice and easy to move. If we're not on them, we just drill a couple holes. No fish. Move on, right? Go to the next spot. Find a different depth. You know, run and gun. Hit on clams. Bang on those rocks down there and just see what we can get but more or less i like my up north but uh there's also you know lakes around here where we live in spruce grove and surrounding areas and they're good to just go for the afternoon you know or just the weekend it's good even hitting up places like waldman there's some big giants in there too and 
and there's it, and it's ripe, man. I I just I love fishing, but it's been pretty cold these last few days, so it's kind of killing it for us. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been pleasant. Um, Todd, I saw something about your uh, tip up there. Yeah, Zach was just asking if I've used it. I actually haven't yet. I've got it sitting uh, sitting in my truck from the last trip. I was hoping to use it last week, but uh, it ended up just not working out. So hopefully this weekend I'll get to try it. But, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to try it out. I think it's going to work really well. Did you hook up the batteries and stuff when it was bubbling and everything? Yeah, you bet. I give it a bit of a dry run here at the house. Uh, I think the nicest thing is that having sausage fingers like this is it's got an oversized reel on it. So from a tip-up aspect, I, th I think it's going to be stellar. I guess there's one lake in particular that will either – make it prove itself or it'll be getting punted across the ice like my heater did last week so yeah what's the deal with that, <laughs> I that. uh it got no, no and i only asked because i seen your bag for sale today and i and i made a joke and i was like oh maybe that wasn't a funny joke yeah you know what it's it's crazy i've always been a big fan of big buddy heaters um but i got my flex i don't know if it's a lemon you know, I used it when you and I fished there last weekend. It worked awesome. Uh, went to use it last week, and I know guys get into the whole taking it apart, do this, do that. Um, it's just was not functioning, and it's not so much that I don't mind tinkering around with that stuff, but when it's minus 25 out and you're tinkering with that kind of stuff, that's not the time or the place. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it, uh, it got Hulk smashed and tossed out of my tent. Uh, it's not repairable. Um, it's just also not reliable. And I, I think probably what I'll do is I'll go back to the original Big Buddy. Uh, I know yeah, you so. used flower for the longest time and you just went to Big Buddy, right? But Yeah, but, okay, so I didn't have any problems with my Big Buddy this weekend. Like, it worked ran fine. Um, yeah. I'm always going to carry the sunflower heater, though, um, just as a backup. Obviously, it's it's pretty reliable. You got the double um, bumper? I have the no, I have the 540 tank top. So it's like ridiculous. Like I, yeah, Todd yeah. couldn't even come in my shack on the, on the other yeah. end. He's like, it's too much for me. Yeah. But uh the big buddy's super nice to sleep with, but I have not heard a whole lot of good things about these flexes, man. And and I'm con and like I don't I don't want to talk bad about anyone. But it seems like they're phasing the big buddy out because I had a super hard time getting mine. And, like, Canadian Tire's not getting more. All these other places aren't getting more. So I'm wondering if they're kind of phasing the big buddy out and moving to the flex. They well, probably... a lot of it is, is I mean, it all, it all comes down to resonance, right? I mean, there was a worldwide resin shortage for the last two years. You know, oh, okay. A lot of guys that are using molded products and stuff like that, you just can't get it. Um, I've been a big fan of the flex. I think the problem has become that, you know, it's good to see a company that's constantly growing their product, but I think the flex has just gotten to be too complex for cold weather situations. And it, it is not user friendly whatsoever in a cold weather application. It just isn't. Yeah. Like maybe for like minus 10 hanging out and stuff like that, but minus, I mean, we have pretty extreme temperatures, man. You got to think about it. Like, yeah. And, and We're also other, testing things and things where it's not even meant to be. Yeah, well, and the other problem with it is, is that as good of a heater as it is, the other big buddy products, if, if you have to take them apart in the field, you can. Yeah. With flex, it's 12 screws, you know, you pull your mesh off, there's seals that are falling, like it is not user friendly at all. So I'll probably uh -huh. just go back to the original uh, big buddy heater. I used that one for four years. I ended up giving it or selling it to Tash. They're indestructible. Um, but yeah, this one got Hulk smashed. You guys know what I'm like when things aren't going my way on the ice. It's not friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Buddy. Heater yeah, no, is that, I'm at. like, I, I am like super stoked with my big buddy. I'll tell you what I was sleeping. It was like, whatever it was is minus 38 or whatever with the wind chill or whatever it is. And, you know uh, I, I was doing really good. Um, I was fishing. As far as I understand, with the big buddies, you after a while it's going to run rough unless you get the filter. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be investing in that right away. Um, but I don't know. I haven't heard a ton of great things about the flex, so it doesn't 
definitely doesn't interest me a whole lot, that one. Do you What's know what the worst part? part was about it is – uh, it was my first time fishing with this group of guys. There was six of us. I had never met the other five before. Uh, they didn't talk to me for the last two hours after seeing me throw my heater <laughs> football style out of the tent and almost hitting the one guy I was with. I mean, I was pissed. You know, Classic four, time. four hours I wasted on trying to get that thing going. <laughs> That's rough, man. What, yeah. what BTOs? Is there what's the difference in the flex and the big buddy for BTOs? I could be wrong, but I believe the flex puts out eighteen thousand, same as the the big buddy does, yeah. uh, the original one. Um, but I'm not, I could be wrong there, but I believe it's eighteen. What I'm gonna do probably tomorrow is if I do end up going, is I've got my Princess Auto heater out in the garage, and I'm pretty sure it's got a low O2 sensor. That's the big thing. And I'm just gonna run that for the rest of the year, man. I'm I'm done monkeying around with this BS. I not gonna happen. I run double pumper sunflower heater. Okay. I can, I can make it really hot or it's still hot. Yeah, the that's that's the beauty of the sunflower heater. It's just like I don't know, even with my even with my CO detector, man, like I was not comfortable sleeping with that thing on. Sleeping with it on, definitely not. And I overnight, and anyone who knows me knows that I'm I overnight like literally all the time, constantly, nonstop. <laughs> that, that looks repairable. I don't know, like oh, literally. Like, cool. Aaron, and you guys know how I fix things, right? <laughs> okay, your flooring is not. Your flooring just take care of things. Is it all padding? padding? Darcy's gonna get, kill you. When you get home, don't you just lay out your foam slats in your in your ice room? To dry? I hope that he does because otherwise <laughs> that floor is not in good shape. We gotta get back on topic, Aaron. <laughs> yes. Do we talk about trips you're going on this year? Yeah, I can't did. remember oh, now. Yeah. I went on a big buddy smashing mission. Who knows what's happening? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, they're good to cook on too, man. I put a grill on my best buddy heater and throw yeah. the throw the pizza sub and wrap it in tin foil, and it's a good little cooker too as, as well. What uh, species are you most uh, excited to target this year? I'm speaking for just me, and I'm I'm I love get I love perch. I I yeah. love smashing perch. I like walleye too. Big game hunting, I guess if you want to call it. Uh, a couple of my brothers were sitting in the tent today talking about that why are you going for perch when there's big game to get they're after walleye but like i mean figure it out like i love i love perch i love catching perch i love catching big ones i love catching small ones doesn't matter but um all the above whatever i'm up i'm game for anything if anybody wants to go anywhere pick let's go you want to do pike let's go pike let's go walleye yeah. let's go perch yeah. but me personally i love the perch yeah definitely they're fun all yeah. species out there fun different yeah. total setups most Absolutely. of them so always keeps the mind ticking yeah a lot a lot more running and gunning like it's not something that you're going to want to set the trailer up on because no. they're going to be moving and you're going to be moving with them and you know if you get on them you get on them but so be it but usually at that 30 foot 30 feet mark or whatever then you can usually stay on them most of, more or less and then later on with the trailer while you're camping out on the ice you're after some ling, right? So that's the overnighter thing. And like to pull up some ling at around 11, 10 o'clock at night and just keep going. So that's yeah. fun. I love ling too, man. Ling all day. They're delicious. And I like eating them. So, I mean, they're gross and terrible looking, but I like them. They're good. They taste they're my good. favorite meat by far. They're beautiful yeah. and delicious. Yeah. yeah. I like their head shakes too when you fight them. Big oh, head yeah. Shakes. They're fun. They're just bulldogs. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. bulldogs. You can tell it instantly. It's like, oh, that's yeah. a bird. <laughs> Just wait yeah. and shake him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you got something to give away for the guests tonight? Absolutely. Yeah, we got two of our custom uh, Len Thompson lures, number zeros. Definitely throw those up for grabs for whatever you guys want to put on, whatever we want to do. Pick a number. Hey, it's up to you. You can pick an emoji. Whoever does the first, you pick an emoji, and whoever brings it up first, we'll go with that. Okay, well, let's go with the, 
the fishing one. Fishing there. emoji. Who's got the fishing emoji? <laughs> Who's going to win it? doesn't know you got a Facebook page set up there too, right, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Locators Outdoors on Facebook and also as well as Instagram. I think I think right. got it. Do we do we got a winner? Yeah. Oh, BJ Slow. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I cannot pronounce your last name because I didn't finish high school. So <laughs> 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 well uh, if you can send me your information, I'll send it to Aaron after this. And uh, yeah, he can send those over to you. Thanks for doing that, Aaron. Yeah, Absolutely. Aaron, Aaron, that's wicked of you. That's wicked of you. Absolutely. Me. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Yeah, one more time. Where can they find you and all your YouTube videos and whatnot? Yeah, YouTube. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram. And you can find us on Facebook. Uh, the Locators the Outdoors. Locators. Yeah. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thanks. Have Thank a good one. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Talk to you later, guys. Do some shifting again. Absolutely. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's man. Good that we're tech friendly. Hello. Here. This guy looks like the guy that should be running the whole program. He's got the headset. Looks like he's in a nice techy room. Yeah, I'm just yeah, eating yeah. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, I just want Broden. I just want to hear you say that's not a knife. No, that's not a knife, mate. <laughs> but but there's the one I seen you play knifey spoony before. <laughs> oh yes, the old Simpson episode on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Yes. How's it but going, bro? Nothing beats Classic Simpson. No, not bad. Not bad. Been pretty pretty busy with the fishing and working. Sort of first day back after the Christmas break and yeah, three days back at work, then one day off and then back at work again for the rest of the year. <laughs> Next year. Yeah, you've been on a mission. You've got some beautiful fish already this year. Yeah, especially open water. Had a definitely really good year. Obviously, what was it? I think it was like 60,000 kilometers I put on the truck this year in just the summertime. And then... Yeah. Obviously, like there was a Saskatchewan trip out all the way to Creighton. That was a definitely a highlight of the year for sure. Big pike and big walleye. And you did you win the Alberta kayak series this year? Uh, yes. So the West, I'm going to be uh, getting in trouble for mispronouncing it, but it's a Western Canadian. Western Canada Kayak Fishing Derby, I believe. And they hold a summer long tournament. And it's basically you have the whole summer and you it's multitude of species. So it's a multi species event. And I managed to pull some horseshoe luck right on the last day of the tournament and yeah, managed to beat the get on top and win the first prize place. It's amazing. What? Good for you. Yeah. yeah, what province yeah. was that over then? That was over a couple of few provinces then. That was over BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, as well as the west part of Manitoba. Nice. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. That's super epic. Yeah, that's a I good appreciate it. And anyone who yeah. gives you any problems for mispronouncing anything is pretty rude because just listening to you talk is awesome. Steve Irwin was yeah. my hero, so every time you talk is sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One time, can it. I tell a story? I don't want to sound dumb, but I always sound dumb. I went fishing with this dude from Australia um, for sturgeon. I think it was last year. It might have been the year before. And we were – so we're fishing, and uh, it was nighttime, and he had maybe had a few drinks or something. And he freaked out because there was a log in the water and he thought it was a crocodile. It was the funniest thing in the world, man. Well, Do you ever... I'll tell you one, fu one funny thing. What was it? It was... That sounds uh, dumb, but it looks on yeah. Todd's face and Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, first, first summer here, first fishing trip in the kayak that I bought, and I uh, went to Wobbling. There's this big sort of little community meetup. 
never caught a single freshwater fish in Canada yet and um, caught a few walleye. I have it all the time. And then all of a sudden I hooked onto this, like couldn't work out what it was. It was just fighting different. And I pulled it in and long story short, it was a pike. But I'm calling out to everyone. I said, what the, what the hell is this toothy thing? I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, going, and it's just going completely crazy in the kayak, trying to bite my feet and everything. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know what I've got myself into here. But, yeah. Like, even the way he says pike, it was a pike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, it's so much more what, interesting. You need a YouTube, bro. Oh. What yeah, uh, trips well, do you have planned, Tram, um, planned for this year? I do hope, well, I signed up for that cold lake um, tournament. I've caught plenty of lakers in the open water, but this will be the first time actually targeting them in the uh, hard water. And then I have had the, uh, I have a friend over in um, Saskatchewan, a Deacon Baker, uh, Denise and Caden. They uh, invited me over to try to catch some late season pike. It's a fun lake, man. You'll have fun there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hoy is Caden, super. Hoy has a sweet YouTube. Sorry. He just commented some funny stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. we and I get along pretty fun. Uh, he's, a, he's a very good, very good lad. Whose shoe do you drink it out of, though? That's yeah, like how these shoeies. What are your favorite? What's your favorite drink in a shoey? Are you a happy oh. dad guy, like the guy in the UFC, or what? No, but basically anything, anything, and basically anything. anything. Um, <laughs> at, Rock as long stars? as you don't have any, as long as you don't have any form of toenail infection or anything, I'm game. Oh well, you so you do I it out of other people's shoes. If it came in a size sixteen boot, but we'll see. We'll find out in February. Yeah, yeah that's like sure two. Enough. That's like two or three beers in your boot, man. Holy. <laughs> yeah. My boot's like half a beer. Yeah, but I know. Um, back to the the Deacon Baker thing. Caden caught what was it, 10 40 inch plus pike in one day in late March, and wow. I'm just like, and he's he's definitely like it was ridiculous watching what he was doing and. I'm lucky enough to have one 40 inch pike to my name, and this got this kid who's 20 years old catching 10 plus 10 plus 40 inch pike in a day. The back one in a, ten in a day is pretty wild, man. That's yeah, insane. Yeah. I think the most well, like 40 inch I've ever caught in a day is two, and yeah, I thought that was like amazing. Like Stephen Baker is amazing. Stephen yeah. Baker is amazing. I really wish I lived a little bit closer. <laughs> Big trail. No, I live pretty close, and I've never been there. Yeah, I've I don't know why. But... It's amazing out there. Yeah. 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 What sure. uh, you got? Any tips and tricks for everybody out there? Well, according to most people, I'm just a silly foreigner. But um, <laughs> most of the time, I've actually, funny enough, I learned this off. And I've only been recently bringing it into my own fishing game. Uncut angling Aaron Weeb. He does it a lot, especially for his panfish. And that's, I didn't even think it would work that well, but slowly, like when you see a fish come in on that fish finder and he's just slowly rising in that little bait up, I used to just leave it and just jiggle in front of its face and wait for it to bite. But I've almost, not, not exaggerating, almost tripled the hookups just slowly rising that out of its way and it will just slowly follow up. And that's big definitely been big difference this year. Big difference. That is always been a classic. It just makes the bite go on anything. Yeah. And you know, that's like a pretty simple tip that a lot of times like you would overlook thinking of like telling someone, but it's such an important thing to catching fish is like when that thing, when that fish comes in and you mark them, keep doing the same thing, but keep doing the same thing up. And yeah. you're going to well, He's came in for a reason. It's just like a pretty much a smaller version of how I catch lake trout. Like if I mark you just can't give them a look at it, right? Yeah, you just get it to look at it, then you rip it away from them, and they they're just like, "No, I want that now." And so, yeah, 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 it's a subtle thing that works awesome for whitefish. A lot of people just don't understand why they just go rip them by their baits, rip them by their baits, and never do anything. They'll come sit and go by it. Just give that little bit of action like if you're not moving all the time till something comes you're not working it very much so 
Yeah. And, and like a flasher is a tool that'll really teach you that for, for me. Um, especially I learned when you're ice fishing walleyes, like every walleye, if you just pop it up, he's going to yeah. eat it. And like, yeah. if you don't have a flasher, you can't necessarily tell that that fish is there, especially when you're fishing deeper water. Um, so you don't really get to learn that uh, unless someone tells you that because you can't see the fishes there. So, I mean, that's a super good tip. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like if you don't got a flash or anything for lake trout, hit the bottom, rip it up 10 feet. Start moving. Back you gotta, to the you gotta always be moving up. Rip it back up, drop it, rip yeah. it up halfway, drop it, rip it, just keep going. It's the no, most. It's, yeah. A flasher or even just a regular fish find is the easily one of the best tools you can possibly have. Like sometimes, like was it last year in um, Cold Lake? I didn't have a fish finder on and I'm just jigging away, nothing coming in, no bites. And then my friend comes along and says, hey, like we were in 60 foot, but now we're in 100 foot. Maybe you should drop that down. And me being the idiot, I'll, oh, I guess I'll drop it down. And literally five seconds later, fish on. Like, yeah. The first, two, fish finder. Yeah. first two times I fished Cold Lake, no flash or nothing. First time I had a bite, second time. I had a hit. I didn't knew nothing about lake trout, nothing about any of that stuff. I go back with a flasher and watch a couple of videos. Like Matt Weaver throws down awesome videos, especially on Cold Lake. He knows those fish. It's he knows what to do. That's how I pretty much learned lake trout, lake trout fishing, I guess, because I've never put any time into lake trout, and that was probably five years ago. Now I'm like a fiend for lake trout. Like, it's a, so much fun. Oh, it's it's, rush. Um, yeah. It's amazing, like, watching that fish finder and you're jigging and you see that lake trout come in and you start, rock, I, like, with tube jigs or even, like, a vibrator, you can start pumping that reel up and, like, and you just watch this mark, just chase it, like, 50, 60 it's feet up and just fun. smack it. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. And you're just going, going. We were up there the one time. I'm reeling. We're in like 96 feet of water. I'm bringing it all the way up, and I'm looking down the hole, and I'm reeling. I'm looking at the flasher. Then that fish is like at the hole, does a 180. I just drop it right down 10 feet later. Boom, he's on. Yeah. Like, just intense. Yeah, well, this this year, definitely, I was uh, had a had a vibe, no, I had a tube jig on at the time and just pumped it up and then had probably 30 feet to go or something and just up the speed once again and just got hit. And me, stupidly, was standing up in the kayak and almost got ripped off the side of the kayak at the same time <laughs> as he just bit down. And <laughs> that was um, that was a rather dance I had to put off to get back down and steady. But no, nah, they're, they're an awesome fish to fish for. Yeah, no, they've become one of my favorites for sure. Like, I'm kind of on a mission now. It's yeah, just it just got my me head. A lot of the yeah, it reminds me a lot of coastal fishing, like back home. It reminds me a lot of how how you fish for them and everything. Yeah, just looking. Yeah, looking for bait balls, jigging through the bait ball. Yeah. What uh, on an average day, say you got some lures, say you're just gonna head out. What do you like to have packed in your tackle box? Uh, ice fishing or open water. We'll talk ice fishing. Talk ice fishing. So basically, I just picked up that striker ice bag, which allows me to put like four tackles and like some major big ones. I'll obviously carry my big assortment of jigs because obviously colors, weights, everything can matter. And I'll just taste basically take an arrangement of paddle tails, arrangement of uh, uh, twister tails, obviously some minnows because that's it, that is a staple of a lot of people's fishing and vibratos and just reaction style baits, just like these uh, YY crankbaits. The YY ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YY crank. Yep. This, my friend Lee started using them and I had seen them before and they're amazing. And correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard that he might be bringing out a five inch crankbait. Yeah. In that. And that's. Mm -hmm. For me, that I think that's going to be awesome for lake trout because that noise in these, like that reaction bait, 
It's just to kind of correct you, Broden, don't ever tell anyone you're friends with Lee. That will <laughs> oh, okay. your future, yeah. No, no, fair enough, yep. So, yeah, crankbaits, smaller, smaller plastics I've found to be more effective at the moment throughout the hard water, um, especially with this cold front that came through. Definitely some small, very small movement, nothing really aggressive. Yep. Funny enough, I haven't caught anything dead sticking at all this this oh. season. Nothing dead sticking. Everything's been some sort of reaction bite. How high are you keeping that bait off the bottom? Um, walleye generally about a foot and a half to a foot. Um, but once in a while, I'll be dropping that thing down at the bottom and hitting on the bottom for a few times with the uh, the vibratos. I'll I'll pump them three three to four times. And then I'll just hold it stationary for the same amount of time that I'll hold that thing. And nine times out of 10, I'm getting that hit on when it's still. It's just that noise brings them in. And then you'll just see a wall like come through the hole and just go, yeah. just smash that. Yeah, I'll agree with that, that slow bite, keep it like within an inch. If not, just yeah. like touching the bottom. Use like a uh, like, uh, eerie jig head so that metal's just sticking up, but the jig is still on the ground. So it almost looks like yep. it's beating supernatural, doesn't know yep. what's going on and just gets attacked. Like yep. super trick for a lot of different fish for sure. Yep. That, Put that that's bait been, right on the ground when it's when the fishing's not working well, lay it on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta agree with you. Like sure. This this yep. weekend, like nothing was on the dead stick. I think I caught two fish on the dead stick and about 50 on, on a jig and wrap. So. Wow. Well, actually, rip and wrap too, but, but everything was reactionary. And like you said, everything was jig, 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 bring it in, pound it in the sand, and then lift it and pause it there like a foot off bottom for a second. And I was literally watching walleye come up and crank my, my rattle bait or my jig and wrap as I was sitting a foot off bottom. Because I'd set it, even when I'd set it down. I'd set it down for two seconds after jigging it, and I'd come back and look over, and my rod's almost in the hole. Was so that they wouldn't, going? Eat, they wouldn't eat the jig in the minnow sitting on bottom. They wouldn't eat the jig in the minnow a foot off bottom. They didn't want the jig in the minnow. It was crazy. What? Yeah. Was that I've going had that on? all year? It's been like that for me. Was that going and into like, that cold front? That's going into it, being in it. That's literally all year for me. Yeah, but because like, I know you guys are this weekend, that's that's like right in the cold front, I guess. And it th that's what was odd to me. It's like you think that right in the cold front, you're going to have a lot of dead stick activity. The dead stick yeah. activity was was n zero, which is crazy uh, because yeah. last week everything was dead stick for me. I and I'd re and like not only like sometimes that they'd get it while I pause it, but a lot of times. I would also get them pinned it to the ground too. So like they were negative, but they weren't completely negative because they they were pinning that jig and wrap to the ground too at the same time. Yeah, I think maybe this time of year with the amount of oxygen, and since the ice is just still building, you don't have that super fluctuation in the water temperature yet. Yeah, it might might give it a little better, but. Yeah, that's just that's yeah. just me thinking off my head. I don't even know if that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, a good like, yeah. so question. Yeah, yeah, that's a good Pfizer question. I mean, once you're below the thermal climate, realistically, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. You know, when you're fishing yeah. 28 yeah. feet deep, it's it, and like when you're fishing 28 feet deep, we're talking walleye in a, in a lake that maxes at 50. You're below that thermal climate at 28 feet in most parts of the lake, anyway. Um, which so make, shouldn't be overly affected by the, they're still going to be affected because it's the coldest day of the year so far. Um, yeah. but they shouldn't be as affected as a fish that needs to live above that, say like a trout. Yeah. Like, that like, makes like sense. a rainbow or a yeah. tiger or whatever. So they were still aggressive, but they just, I've always, like last year I had a lot of luck on dead sticks and like, I haven't caught a single brook trout on a dead stick all year. Um, that's for sure. Um, just rain. I guess I've got some rainbows, um, but walleyes, it was slim to none. Yeah. Huh. And every, every brook trout's been reaction bite for me this year, too. I, yeah, absolutely. Every brook trout I got was reaction. 
Yeah. And you know, uh, I actually had better luck out. with rookies at night than in the day this year. I don't know. I I I don't even know what to chalk my season up to at this point. But I was definitely catching more brook trout just after dark than in the daytime. It was weird for me. See, funny enough, I was catching more early, early morning. Yeah, early and normally morning. early morning That's bites is early morning bites pretty classic for me. Yeah, for brook trout, but it wasn't there like it was like four thirty to six thirty. There was a bite window there every, yeah. every night, and it was there every single night, and I couldn't That's count on the morning bite. So oh, right. those northern and southern brookies are different, obviously. Then, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> They're frustrating. I'll tell you that. Yeah, can, that yes. that that lake's kind of interesting, anyways. But well, I had a really like I don't know, like I had a horrible freeze up this year. It kept yeah everything was like my temperatures never got good until like basically two weeks ago. Yeah. No, was when I had safe ice across the board. So it's been really rough for me to be able to even get to spots that I want to fish. Yeah, yeah, you've had a real late start to the ice season while I've been yeah, out a bit more than a month than you, ahead of you. Yeah, like I, I was able to fish one bay on a lake for like a month. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. Broden, you got something to give away? I do. Um, if people aren't following me already, I teamed up with SBA Baits a little while ago and uh, they sent me a bit of a gift package and all that. And I thought I would make a little package together. It's got a few little cranks, a few little sample sizes of this sort of microplastics. And mm. I've thrown in a couple of Marco Trulies, uh, tungsten jigs. The guy makes oh, some yeah. I win? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, great guy. He brought uh, Aaron's cooler down. She won from Cold Lake last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mark and, will some uh, awesome stuff. Yeah, he Mark does good shit. And, and that glow, like funny enough, like that big walleye caught a couple of weeks ago, a little white plastic from SBA again. I've been using him for a while before this. Is that? And, uh, that's a up? little paddle tail. Yeah, little little ribbed power shad, what they call it. It's yeah, it's a little yeah. paddle tail, two little two paddle inches paddle. long, and Marco's little wonder bread sort of. It's only quarter ounce tungsten jig, and that's been dynamite on trout. I caught probably one of the days I caught like sixteen trout on that one lure, and everyone else is ca- we're still catching a few, but yeah, this one definitely took the day. And then yeah, that those two or three good walleye caught a couple on him and then yeah just been super effective this year all right do you have an emoji you want to uh have someone put up then we can or do you got another game well let's stick with the emoji and see if someone can find the australian flag first oh, oh dang <laughs> Throwing down the That's gauntlet. A good one. That is good. Yeah, that like is a that. good one. I like that. Oh man, good call. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's a cool prize package. Good job, one. No, that's an amazing yeah. prize package. <laughs> Thanks for yeah, bringing it. Oh yeah. I'm huh? a fish and boy. I, I think Alan's tried, but I believe it should be the actual flag, should it not? Yeah, it's got to be the flag. Oh. Fish and boy. Oh no, I think I think. The old I think Alan's got the flag. What is wrong with this reel? This is way too expensive well, to be acting like but, this. Well, Alan has funny the flag. Enough, funny enough, I actually fish with Alan quite a lot, and I did tell him a little while ago that I have a little uh, – I should give you some plastics. And funny enough, well, I guess he will be getting some plastics. So I guess it's going to come up as the flag on my end is why. Doesn't it? I'm no, looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But now, well, well, yeah, I guess you know well, how to get a hold of them. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, no. So Trevor, obviously, well, sorry, Alan, as he goes by on the digital media of things. Yeah, you know where I work. So. <laughs> oh, you know where I work. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, 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 he know he knows where I live and everything. In, you know so, what yeah. corner to find me, all 
<laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up on the ice sooner or later, so it's fine. I'll be able to sort that out for him. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> we're over time, over budget. Well, that's because we were late. Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> I never worry, man. <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing tinfoil around my neck with a perch and a a reel, so I can't worry about anything right now. Maybe you can sing us out to the credits, and uh, we'll go from there. Sing us uh, out to the credits. Hey, wait. And give her. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning boy. in. Next week, uh, we got Donovan. <laughs> From uh, Audi, we're going to be talking Lake Winnipeg, Red River, Big Cats. Oh, Donovan Pierce. uh, Pardon? Donovan Pierce. Yeah, you might know his company, but we'll put it up on uh, the posters, and it's going to be an amazing show. So stay tuned, and new giveaway next uh, month lithium battery for Ooh. your camera, your flasher. It'll fit in perfectly, and you're gonna have the charge of a lifetime. Yep, I could always do with more lithium batteries. <laughs> the All charge right, of a lifetime. Have a good one, Adam. Sing us out. I <laughs> just go. <laughs> Just probably just go watch it on on Facebook or wherever. I play. All right, go Facebook. to Adam's page, find them. Cheers! <laughs> Happy New Year's, everybody. We have a bunch Happy of fish and boys. Right. Happy New Year's, guys. Peace.